I'm a professional mediator, conflict resolution specialist, and I offer a variety of services. Uh, mediation is my main focus, and some clients, the busiest part of my business is family and divorce. I see an a lot of time and money rather than going through the litigation process. They have a say, and there's and control over all the whole process of me telling them what to do. And I cover everything from child support to residential care to equitable distribution of property. Every, the same thing that's covered in litigation, except nobody's telling them what to do. And it's a very uh, cost-effective and, and positive way to, to move forward. Uh, I do leadership training because I also go into businesses and do conflict resolution or facilitate a conflict and help the, the follow through with the leadership. Because what I was doing when I was going into organizations, I, I said to myself, what is it that the organization is going to do to keep going forward and following through with what I helped them with? You know, leadership is only as effective as how, what you implement, what you do going forward. So I do mastermind groups, I do leadership trainings, I do seminars, uh, conflict resolution, obviously, uh, business ombudsman is just what I talk about, and everybody knows ombudsman terms from a nursing home or hospital type issue. It's almost the same thing. I'm a neutral third party that goes into an organization or a business and helps resolve a conflict. Now some larger or even any organization might say to me, well, Jeff, I have a human resources department that does that. Well, you have a human resources department, but they're not a neutral third party. They're, they have a duty to do what management wants to do and produce results from management. They're not, in, they're not completely neutral. Myself coming in to an organization, I know nothing about the organization other than I was hired to resolve the conflict. That's a true neutral third party coming in and doing that. Arbitration, I'm certified by the Nassau Supreme Court as Part 146 arbitrator. I volunteer and do attorney client fee disputes. And almost all of those involve matrimonial, where they have these large bills and they don't want to pay for one reason or the other. It's, it, it's craziness. And even in my realm of what I do, I could do an arbitration or a meet arbor agreement, which is kind of like a combination. So a couple will come in and have 20 issues to be resolved. We'll get to 17 of them, let's just say, for example, and these three you just can't resolve for whatever reason. Rather than have a mediation process break down and they leave and they hire attorneys and they're all back to square one, I'll, I'll, they'll agree to let me arbitrate them. They'll present their cases and I'll come back with a decision based on those two or three uh, issues. And workshops, right? I do workshops, right? Like I said earlier, I go into organizations. This is the, the radio station that we all listen to, right? WIIFM, what's in it for me? When you're dealing with people, when we're looking, even ourselves, for a product or service, or I try to keep this in mind when people look at me, this is what they want to know. But, you know, why should I go to mediation? Why should I choose alternative speed resolution? My friend went to an attorney and they, they said this, or I, did, I heard this, you should do that. So I try to base my services on, well, on their needs, when I talk to them and see what they need. Uh, I add value in, in helping people resolve conflict, become better leaders, achieve positive results with a win-win strategy, while helping people become the best possible version of themselves. This happens in my leadership training, it happens in my mediation. People are working together, they're talking about issues, they're trying to resolve them, and they're better people rather than fighting among themselves and not getting anything or, or spending all their money. <coughs> now this is the uh, so the idea is, is oh, it's winning way to finally win twice. <laughs> you know, I'm going to take you. I'm going to go to attorney. I'm going to take you for everything you got, and and that's it. My girlfriend, she got a divorce. She has two kids also. She make the husband makes the same amount of money you do. Um, you, the attorneys here, could, could verify that no two cases are exactly alike, and nobody ever knows what the judge is going to decide or what's going to happen in the litigation process. What happens in depositions? You can't guarantee an outcome. You, you just can't. So, so why go there? Why say, with whatever spouse this, but in this case, let's just say it's a wife, because I had a couple recently, I was trying to get into mediation. He wanted it, his wife didn't, and he calls me up and he said, she told me she's gonna take me for everything I got. He's the money spouse, they've been married a little over 20 years, she hasn't worked, so generally in that case, he's gonna wind up paying her legal fees and his legal fees. So let's just say when the whole process is over, she gets what she wants, or she thinks she wants, she's going to get what's left. So he spent $100,000 maybe for legal fees, 
and and the judge says, okay, you're going to pay, you know, fifteen hundred dollars a month of child support and eighteen hundred dollars of spousal support, and then that might go on for six months or a year or two years, who knows? And for whatever reason, due to financial constraints or whatever the case may be, he can't pay anymore, and he stops paying. What does she do? She's got to go get another attorney, or maybe the same attorney again. She's going to have to pay a retainer up front, even though he may be responsible for it because he's a money spouse. The attorney's still going to get the retainer fee, and and then you got to get him back to court. Why not go to mediation? where you both have a say, you're both more likely to abide by the agreement you put in because you know what works for you. Nobody knows what works better for your children, for your assets, for your moving forward in the future than you, Mary and Tom, mom and dad. When you go through the litigation process, this is pretty much what it looks like. So you have, you have the two parties and each order, they each hire an attorney. And you're going to pay, you know, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 probably the average in New York for a retainer fee. And, uh, you know, uh, so Mary over here says, uh, I want the house, I want the pensions, I want, you know, whatever case may be. And, and Joe says, but I want the house and, and I want the cars and, and the boat and the vacation home. And the party talks to their attorney each time, this goes back and forth, dollar signs going up, right? Uh, whatever attorney charges per hour, per minute. And then this attorney, this talk to the other attorney, same thing, back and forth, back and forth. You get your bill monthly, 0 0.2, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, three hours. You know, before you know it, you're going to be spending a lot of money. And again, the average cost literally is $40,000 a, a couple of uh, research. So let's say you get to court now. So you're court 20 years, you know, 20 years, two years, three years later, and the judge is here, and he doesn't want to talk to you. He doesn't care what's important to you. He's, he's talking to the attorneys, you know. Well, Judge, he you know cheated on me, and he's, he's sleeping with his secretary, and so I deserve more money, and, and that's just not how it works. And what the judge is going to do is he's going to review your case 20, 30 minutes before you before uh, you appear before him, and he's going to make a decision just based on the law and nothing else. Mediation is voluntary; it's inexpensive. The parties decide the outcome and result in a win-win situation. It's all about talking, listening, resolving issues, getting to the underlying issues. When you're in a room together with a neutral third party and you're talking, things just flow. No matter how contentious and how, how excuse me, how high profile it turns out to be, you get to these, these type issues. You know, you, you learn to listen to couples, I do as a mediator, or, or to each other. And while you might not admit you understand where they're coming from, but when they're talking, at least in the back of your head, a lot of times, well, I didn't know she felt that way. Or, or he felt that way. And it helps, you know, get through these tough times. Now here you are in the mediation process. You have the mediator, and you got the two parties, and there's conversations going back between the parties. So rather than this party telling me and me telling the other party what they said, vice versa, it's a constant communication, we're all in room together. It's so much easier to get to a resolution when everybody's together, everybody's exchanging ideas right then and there, instead of going back and forth between three or four parties to get there. I also provide in-house trainings where, again, like I said earlier, I go into organizations, I, I, I resolve conflicts, I help facilitate a conflict, I help put procedures in place in regards to how to move going forward, help with, uh, with follow-up leadership trainings, seminars, mastermind groups, you know, everybody can go to a leadership training or a seminar or a weekend and get all excited about what they saw, but what happens when you go back home or to your office? Do you go back to doing the same things you were doing? If you want to increase your leadership, if you want to be a better person, a better father, a better mother, a better CEO, a better leader, then you have to change what you were doing prior to that. And just because you're a manager or a CEO or doesn't make you automatically a leader. Leadership's all about influence, nothing more, nothing less than that. Thank you. That's pretty much all my presentation this morning. Jeffrey? What is an EJD? That's Executive Juris Doctorate. What was that? Executive Juris Doctorate. I attended Al Concord Law School for Catholic University. It said it was an online correspondence that allowed me to, if I wanted to take the bar in California, which I had no inkling to go to California. And because it's not an EBA approved law school, it's not reciprocal to New York to take the bar. So towards my last year in law school, I decided to go with the EJD rather than JD because I, I was already involved in the mediation and alternative resolution process. 
Good stuff. Excellent question. Anyone else? Jeffrey? John? Jeffrey, um, who do you find is the most influential in bringing people or potential clients to you? You know, I, I get that question asked all the time, and my, usually my first response is everybody knows somebody who's going through divorce or separation or post-divorce issues, which I deal with also. Also, excuse me, but you know, attorneys are, are that I refer business back and forth to because nice mediation doesn't work. It could be a domestic violence situation or something like that where if somebody has power over the other, it's just it's not fair. The one person who's the powerless one is going to agree to everything. It's not going to be a fair thing, so I refer it to an attorney or something like that. Uh, real estate people who maybe they, who were selling the house because we're getting divorced, separated, or or me to the real estate person. Hey, I've got this couple. They want to sell a house. They want to sell their house, and the other one needs to either buy a house or find an apartment. Um, financial planners, really, almost almost everybody, really. I, I can't imagine um, who would you know be able to refer me this. And then I have attorneys, attorneys, and I, and I have a source of referrals that I refer out because it depends what they need. You know, one spouse might not have dealt with the expenses their entire marriage. Now what are they doing? Now they got this lump settlement. What do I do with it? And and, and in all fairness, what I do is when I give referrals, I like to give at least two or three of each because as a neutral third party, can't look like there's a conflict. And if I just recommend Frank for, to do a will, it might look like there's a, you know, I'm getting something for Frank. So I'll give maybe two. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, but call Frank, he's, he's, he's better. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, and I do that, I do. Sometimes it's three. But, but it, it looks like I have to maintain that usual uh, you know, conflict-free environment. <coughs> Do you work with families in conflict as far as uh, three siblings arguing with the parents? What should be done? Do you sit down with families and actually help them? I've done that. I've done, I've done family disputes in the caregiver world. I think I told you that I'm involved with uh, Long Island Family Caregivers. I'm on the uh, oh, you are. Right, I'm Director of Speakers Bureau there. I'm also helping develop an ombudsman advocacy program. But you know, in that, in that world, you ha I had a, a family, the, the, the son, was taking care of mom, he was living with mom, and the siblings was married, lived maybe 20 minutes away, and they took mom like once a month or twice a month over for dinner. And the son, well you're single, it's okay, you can take care of mom, we have, we have four kids, we've got 12 hours to work in our jobs, we have no time, and you're single, you don't have to worry about it, but meanwhile the, the guy had no life, and he was stuck with taking care of mom. This happens a lot in the family caregiver world. And then, so one, one takes care, the other doesn't. One knows about what mom wants and what her desires are, and then doesn't tell the others, and now mom's maybe in the hospital and he has to make a decision. We don't want that from mom, but this is what mom wanted, and they didn't communicate that beforehand. Or even worse, now mom's gone, and here they all come running, because they're in the will, and they want all their piece of, of the pie, when they didn't do anything and weren't involved in, in mom's life. So I, I do do families, because I have done that, that, that one in particular, that I remember off the top of my head. Excellent. Other questions? Awesome.